What's up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It's Chu here from Choose to Explore where I teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So I just came back from eight days in French Polynesia and it was a blast that I had with my wife. So I decided to create this video about 10 things to know about French Polynesia before you go, especially if you're an American. So the first thing to know that is pretty obvious is that French Polynesia is a French overseas territory since 1946. French Polynesia is a Pacific Island and it has a lot of similarities to other Pacific Islands as well. Being that it is a French overseas territory, the primary language is French as well as Tahitian. So the capital of French Polynesia is in Tahiti and is Papayete. So the next thing that you want to know in French Polynesia is the best time to visit. So there are really two seasons in French Polynesia from November to April, which is when we visited, is the rainy season. It also is the hottest season, but honestly, we went for eight days and it only rained very sporadically for less than 10 minutes at a time. And I want to say it only rained about two to three times on our whole trip. It was very hot though. For me personally, I don't like it that hot, but my wife loved it. If you want a nice beach and relaxation times, this was a great time for myself. But what's also great about it being so hot is the water is hot as well. So it's really refreshing to go in and out of the water. The good thing about coming during this time as well is that there's not as many people around and not as many tourists. So even though this is a popular tourist destination, going during these times, you could have less of a crowd. At least that's what I experienced. However, May to October is their high season. So that means lots of tourists, it's dry season, so it doesn't rain as much, but most importantly, it's whale season. So I wish I would have did some of this research beforehand because going to swim with these humpback whales or some of these snorkeling tours with the humpback whales is a bucket list experience. So while we did do so much fun activities with marine life, doing it with humpback whales, I can't even imagine it. So we definitely will be back in French Polynesia during this season. The next thing that I want to talk about is French Polynesia is expensive. I don't think that this comes as any surprise for a lot of people because when you think about French Polynesia, you think about luxury. But there are so many ways to save money in French Polynesia and we made an entire video on this that you can check out in the description. A simple thing that I'll tell you guys is to get alcohol through duty free because getting them at restaurants, at bars can be very, very expensive. I personally don't drink, but my wife spent $32 on a cocktail. In some places, they'll give you the shot of liquor and they'll give you the drink and you have to pay extra for them to put it in and mix the drink yourselves. It's crazy. And something that is a little different, but much appreciated as an American, is that the taxes are already included in the price. So the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is there is a ton of different diversity in the islands of French Polynesia. There's actually over a hundred islands in French Polynesia. We only went to three, being Tahiti, Morea, and Bora Bora, but if we could, we'd go to them all. Now each island has a different thing to offer. They have different landscapes. Some have mountains, some have no mountains, some are populated, some are unpopulated, but overall, there's a ton of diversity there. So my next thing to know are about the black pearls in French Polynesia. Now these black pearls are also known as Tahitian pearls. So while you're in French Polynesia, you can go to the marshes to find some inexpensive pearls, or you can go to a formal store to get some pearls as well. Now the marshes, typically you're gonna find more affordable prices. Typically they're gonna be lower in quality, but you can get good value here. But based on my experience and going to different shops, you get a lot better quality in the stores. They are a little bit more pricey, but if you know nothing about pearls, going to the shops, they can direct you a little bit better. So while we were on the island of Morea, we had a lot of time with our taxi driver. Sandy, please be sure to book her if you're in the island of Morea. And she gave us a lot of tips and different things to know when you're looking for Tahitian pearls. She told us that there are four main things to look for when you're looking for a Tahitian pearl. So she told us the main categories we need to look out for are size, shine, luster, design, and the imperfections. And by no means am I an expert, but what she told me is if the pearl is not six millimeters, you can't really call it a black Tahitian pearl. And a really cool thing that I like about black Tahitian pearls are they have different varieties of colors. So they have the grays, they have blues, they have greens, they have just a wide spectrum of colors and different designs. So you can pick one that you really like. My wife actually got a black Tahitian pearl ring and it has two black 
pearls on it and we got it from a really cool store in Tahiti. My next point that's super important is not to skip over the island of Tahiti. So if you're flying internationally, you're going to have a stop in Tahiti. Now most people just use that stop in Tahiti to sleep and then go to their next destination, whether it's Morea or Bora Bora. But my wife and I actually spent three days in the island of Tahiti and we did so much. I truly, truly enjoyed my time in Tahiti. It's definitely a different vibe than the other two islands that we visited. You can find a lot cheaper accommodations. There are a lot of locals who live there. It has beautiful landscapes, great surfing spots, waterfalls, lighthouses, black sand beaches, and so much luscious greenery. But I'd recommend staying at least two to three days just so you can explore it a little bit before you go to your next destination. And I know a lot of people go to French Polynesia for overwater bungalows. And in Tahiti, you can do that as well. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is something that we had to learn the hard way. And that is that a lot of things are closed either early or period on Sundays. So we spent a Sunday in Tahiti and pretty much all the shops were closed. The market was closed and we couldn't really do the things that we needed to do. And then the following Sunday, we were in Bora Bora and the markets the restaurants, a lot of things just weren't running. So if you are gonna do anything on a Sunday, make sure it's very early and verify before that it will be open. Realistically, I would just say, use Sunday for a day to relax. Imagine, you're in paradise, relax. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is with rental cars. And it really surprised me because I travel all over the world and I use a rental car in majority of the places that I go. And what that is, is that the car did not come with mileage. So a lot of places that you rent a car from, the mileage you have to pay or add on additionally. Generally speaking, the car rental will save you a lot of money and give you a lot of flexibility versus some of the taxis, but it is an additional expense that you need to think about. So while we were exploring the islands of Tahiti, we actually drove 100 kilometers, so around $60, which was more or less what we paid for the rental car for the day. I believe that they quoted us around high 50 or low 60 cents per kilometer. So just be mindful of that when you are booking car rentals. When I returned the car, I did ask the rental company what the price would be if I had the miles insurance included. And I actually saved by not doing that before. But it is good information to know depending on how many days you're gonna be there or what you plan on doing. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is safety. So in all three islands, we never felt unsafe in our entire trip. And that's a really good thing, especially for people who are coming here on their honeymoon. One less thing to worry about. But the islands are definitely super safe. The people are super kind. Everybody's accommodating and just want to show the beauty of French Polynesia. And my last point, I'm going to talk about Air Tahiti, which is the local carrier in French Polynesia. So if you're flying from the west coast of the United States to Tahiti, or you're flying inter-island in French Polynesia, then you're probably going to be on a flight with Air Tahiti. But there are a few things that you may not be used to with Air Tahiti. So the first policy that's a little bit different is with the baggage. So for your carry-on luggage, you get a handbag and an accessory item. The thing that's a little bit strange about this for me is it doesn't really go by the size, the dimensions of it. It's more so based on the weight. So I normally use my book bag as a carry-on, but when they weighed it, it was over the five kilogram weight. So they actually made me check my bag. Luckily, all standard tickets come with a free check bag. Honestly, I try to avoid checking a bag as much as possible, but my bag came out super quick and it wasn't a problem at all. And I also had an accessory item, which is what I use my crossbody bag for, and I had no problems with this one as well. Now your check bag just has to be under 50 pounds with an economy ticket. The next thing that was a little weird to me is the open seating. Now this was completely different than any airline I've ever been on, even Southwest. So what happens is they're gonna call a gate and everybody's gonna line up. Honestly, if you're going to Bora Bora, you want to sign up and you want to be one of the first ones to see the best views of the islands. So after you check in and your boarding pass is scanned, you literally walk outside and onto the runway. And while we were on the runway, we actually saw an airplane take off right in front of our eyes. Now these planes are a little bit smaller and the propellers are literally right on the side. Now what I highly recommend if you are going to Bora Bora is to sit on the left side and to sit in rows one through four. And this is because the propeller is literally on the fifth row. So on our way there, we were rushing and we actually got all the way up front, but we got the fifth row. I think we got a beautiful view, but it was kind of sort of blocked by the propeller. Also, I was a little bit surprised that for such a short flight, they did give out pineapple juice and it was a pretty smooth flight as well. 
Seeing Bora Bora from above is like no other place I've ever seen. Now, on your way back from Bora Bora to get back to Tahiti, you want to sit in rows 1 through 4, but on the right hand side, and you have another picturesque viewpoint there. So thank you guys so much for checking out our channel. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check out our French Polynesian playlist as we did so much and have a ton of videos and money-saving tips there. So thank you guys. We'll see you guys on the next one.